The Hebrew word, kavod, meaning, something heavy, translates as, glory to the Lord, a flying object used by the God of Yahweh described in the book of Ezekiel. There are many descriptions of advanced technology in the Bible, flying vehicles, iron chariots, weapons with which angels killed. In this article one would like to present one of them. Concerning the plane that God used to travel. It is known as, the glory of the Lord. God forbade the Israelites to make pictures of what is on earth and what is in heaven. They left only descriptions of the advanced technology they saw. In the book of Ezekiel there is one of the best descriptions of this flying machine, based on the text from this book. Using the Warsaw Bible, I developed the appearance of the aircraft. On the basis of the description contained therein, I reconstructed the approximate appearance of the object. Bearing in mind that this text was written thousands of years ago, its content is very difficult and requires us to move our imaginations. We don't speak the same language as ancient people. So we need to put things into perspective. What they witnessed, what they saw, they described in terms known to them. We live in the age of technology. We meet her everywhere, televisions, telephones, cars, we fly in the sky and into orbit. Technology is something common for us, we don't even think how something works, we just use it. What if advanced technology is not only a manifestation of our era? God used flying objects to move around and participate in wars. This is what Ezekiel writes about. I will try to provide you with a description of the glory of the Lord, according to my interpretation of the biblical text. In the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, when I was among the exiles on the Kibar River, the heavens were opened and I had a vision of God. And I looked, and behold, a violent wind blew from the north, and there was a great cloud, flaming fire, and a glow around him, and from its center out of the fire shone something like a flash of polished metal. And among him there was something in the shape of four living things. And they looked like a man, but each had four faces and each had four wings. Their legs were straight and the foot of their legs was like a calf's hoof and they shone like polished bronze. Under their wings on four sides were human hands, and the four cherubim had faces and wings. For all four, their faces looked like a human face in front, a lion's face on the right, an ox's face on the left, and an eagle's face on the back. And when I looked at the cherubim, behold, there was a wheel on the ground beside each of the four living creatures. And the appearance of the wheels and their design were like chrysolite, and all four were of the same shape. They looked and were made as if one wheel was inside the other. And I saw that all four had hoops, tall and terrible, and full of eyes all around and as the cherubim advanced, the wheels also moved beside them, and as the cherubim rose above the ground, they rose up, and as they advanced, I heard the sound of their wings, like the sound of great waters, like the voice of the Almighty, like the noise of the crowd, like the noise of an army. And when they stood still they lowered their wings. Let us pause for a moment and analyze the description of the cherubs. The facility has four cherubs, i.e. four engines. Each engine has four propellers. Beneath each of them are the hands that Ezekiel described supporting the wings. These are actuators that lower and raise the propellers. They set the blades in the appropriate position. When the Lord's glory landed then the propellers were lowered along the engines. While the cherubim took off they raised their wings and lifted the object upwards. The propeller blades are working loudly, the resulting strong gust of wind, which the author also described as the rustle of wings, like the rush of great waters, like the turmoil of the army. 
This is how Ezekiel described the noise made by the running motors and the humming of the rotating blades of the propellers. When the motors stopped working, the propellers were lowered along the body. Each engine had four eagle, lion, bull and human faces. I suppose they are paintings like the pilots of military planes decorate their machines. Each of the four cherubim or motors had a wheel. They were all the same. Large rims with wheels forming a skeleton in the center of the rim, and around smaller wheels described by Ezekiel as eyes. I thought of a wheel without an inner tube, without air. Such a wheel cannot be punctured, the air will not come off. A technical thought that could be applied today, for example, in cars. It is clear from the text that the wheels were attached to the engines, forming the landing gear in flight, they were retracted when landing, they were extending outwards. Let's go back to the text in the Bible. the vault, above their heads, there was something like a throne-shaped sapphire stone, and above what appeared to be a throne, above it was something human-like. And above what appeared to be his hips, I saw a flash of polished metal looking like fire inside him, and down from what appeared to be his hips, I saw what appeared to be fire and a glow around him. Ezekiel describes the pilot's cabin, the throne or armchair and the pilot sitting in it. Such a large machine had to be controlled by at least two pilots. The flash of polished ore resembles a glass cabin. Visible glowing lights gave the impression of fire gave a glow. It is enough to look at the cabin of modern airplanes. There is a lot of blinking lights. Signal lights. Monitors shining brightly. Let us quote another passage. Then the cherubs raised their wings and the wheels moved with them. And the glory of the God of Israel was above them. And as the cherubim lifted up their wings and went up from the ground in front of me, the wheels lifted up with them. And they stood at the entrance to the east gate of the tabernacle of the Lord, and the glory of the God of Israel was in the mountain above them. The takeoff of the plane described by Ezekiel began with raising the blades of the propellers. The engines fired. The audible thunder and gust of wind caused by the rotating propellers must have made a great impression. Probably the machine needed a short acceleration before the power of the engines lifted it up. In the air, the engines rotated horizontally, giving the machine a forward motion. The wheels were hidden in the undercarriage to keep the streamlined shape. As the rainbow appears on the cloud when it rains, so looked all around the splendor of what appeared as the glory of the Lord. When I saw her, I fell on my face. And I heard the voice of the one who spoke. Would you fall to your knees seeing an airplane? No, because you know it's just a machine. A product of technological thought. The ancients did not have access to the technology that the gods had, what they saw was considered divine, they did not see what it was. Technology is God's trump card and thus we have become gods. The gods had no power, they only had technology. We have weapons, planes, cars. Imagine going back to the Middle Ages. People living at that time, seeing a helicopter landing. Some would run away in panic, others would fall to their knees, considering us to be gods walking from heaven. 
the appearance of the glory of the Lord, at least its elements have been immortalized in structures such as mosques. The builders were inspired by what was associated with God by the appearance of Yahweh's plain. Four cherubs and in the center of the dome the abode of God. Thanks for watching. End of part one. Soon the second part titled Ark of the Covenant.